I make no excuses for liking bleak. I love bleak landscapes, I don't like pretty. My favourite sort of colours are, are the uh, umbers and the burnt siennas and the darks. I don't like mud, but I, I end up painting mud quite a lot of the time. <coughs> and now here, I've got a, a bit of a drawing, if you can see it. It's just some, some low barns in a landscape with a bit of grey distance. Some lovely trees here to balance it. A bit of um, foreground here with I put a bit of a bush in here and some stuff and a and a bit of a stream. It's it's based on a on a Roland Hilda uh, Essex no not Essex Kent Kent um, Romney Marsh Kent. Uh, Romney Marsh is a part of, a part of southern England that was reclaimed from the sea. I believe it was drained. It's farmed now, but it's a very, very uh, low-lying area, the type that I love to paint. I don't live near mountains. If I did, I'd paint, paint, I'd have a go at them and, uh, in the Lake District, but I'm, I'm a South Englander and, and all this is within reach of, of my brush, so to speak. Um, now, painting wet in wet using this paper is, is okay, but it has its limitations in that it's difficult to do a compound sky where you let washes dry and then you go over them and you lift out, but you get some hard edges, hard edge clouds and so on. But, but this for demonstrating is, uh, this paper is, is, is very good. Roland Hilda, I'd like to tell you something about him. He, um, he loved using black ink. He was a master of line and wash. He also used a brush with black waterproof ink and a lot of his tree trunks would be put in. But by the time you've got the, the darker colours on your painting, it, it, the, you, it loses the contrast between the black and the white. Black ink always looks striking against white paper, but when you modify the white paper, the, 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 the black sort of blends in. Um, but you've got to use fairly strong colours around it. But here, um, I'm going to go for atmosphere rather than um, hard-edged uh, uh, black objects. I want this to be quite light and these to be warmer, this to be very warm, and the sky to be cold, and this background cold. But that's the idea anyway. Um, I, Roland Hilda sadly is not with us anymore so I don't think he's going to complain about me being inspired by one of his paintings. We all work from other people's paintings and I'm sure a number of you are, are trying to do what I'm doing and I have no problem with that whatsoever. As long as you don't put my signature on it and try and flog it in my name, I don't mind. Right, okay, so I will wet the paper. I'm still not satisfied with my setup with my camera and the, and the light. I'll put a, I'll put a daylight glow bulb on, on it. See if we can get it brighter. But I love my little camcorder. It's a lovely addition to the to the armory. It enables me to do this. My hake is uh, slowly losing all its bristles. I can see the time when. Approaching when I'll have to get another one. Right, so a bit of a bit of raw sienna. Now Roland Hilda wasn't averse to using a bit of gouache in his watercolours. You can't really call them strict watercolours if you're using an opaque paint, but but for highlights and the painting I did a couple of hours ago showing Brancaster, there, there was a, some lovely um, bleached um, foreground uh, tree or shrub, shrub like, like gorse that, that has lost, that, that, that's, that's been weathered and it would have been lovely to have used some, some masking fluid or I could have used some gouache, I do have a tube of gouache handy. The problem with it of course is it gets into all your colours if you're not careful and can make them all opaque and that's not the object of the exercise. We want nice transparency. So we'll put in some, some grey now. I use I'll use uh, I'll use ultramarine and burnt umber. 
gives a nice warm, warm grey. Let's just get that in. Just a central light spot. Always have a have a cloth handy to to take the excess moisture off your brush. I won't touch the water, I want that quite quite light. Right, okay, I'm gonna let that uh, dry off a little bit. I, um, I'm gonna lift out these these puddles here. This is the problem when you're painting vertical almost. This you get these um, this water gathering. I quite like it. If I fiddle around with that now, I, I'm going to get a big cauliflower, so I'm going to leave that, that well alone. I'll bring the trees up into that area, so it won't, won't ultimately make much of a difference. <coughs> but I want to, I, I, I'm going for atmosphere, I'm going for bleakness, and I don't want great lovely blue skies. I want uh, threatening skies, overcast, threatening rain to add to the winter gloom of these trees that I'm going to put in. Let's take that out there. It's just a bit too bad. I'll dry. I'll dry this. And I'll, I'll re-clip it too. Because when you, when you wet the paper, it expands. The paper I'm using is, as you, if you didn't know, is Fabriano. It's a lightweight, really. It's 130 pounds. Very good for this wet in wet. It's inexpensive. Get it from Grantham uh, Arts Discount. It uh, comes in 100 sheet blocks, 15 inches by 11, and it's very, very handy. Right, I'll, I'll gently put in some background. I'm just going to use Payne's Grey, maybe a little bit of blue. <coughs> All right, let's put that in. More blue. No, we're just going to nothing there, going to there'll be some landscapes and fields under this. No, no, no. I'll go across there. Right, that's okay. So I'll, I, I, I don't want to, to blend what's underneath here with with that, but I'm going to have to block that out. Just dry that. Right, okay, that's all right. Um, while I'm at, at it, with my my brush, my, my half inch flat, so I'm going to put in a slightly heavier, warmer building. So I'll just use a sky mix, but with uh, more blue. A bit of, bit of raw sienna, right? let's go for it. Sort of thatched. Just silhouetted, really. And we've got that there. Very little detail on there, just, just had a bit of dark on the roof. That's enough of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, where's my ache? 
The, the paints I'm using, by the way, are Cotman. They're 21 mm tubes of Winsor Newton Cotman, a student quality. I bought the last eight tubes from um, the Emporium Outlet. WWW, the Emporium Outlet. They were knocking out tubes of this for just over three quid compared to the five over five I was paying. So while that lasts, I'll get in while they've got some stock. Right, now I'm going to put in a slightly warmer. I'm going to use burnt sienna in this. Slightly warmer field at the back and a bit of grey in there. So we we'll just get that across there. So we we'll just bring a bit of uh, interest in, into it now. Bit of, bit of sienna. Bit of grey, and then get that nice and light. There's now I use a bit of lemon yellow in there as well. Bring the changes just just to make it more interesting by varying the colours, leaving some some little light spots as well. And there's feel coming all the way across here. Getting the warmer colours in here. It's a bit of a like a stream coming into into this here. So a bit of burnt sienna and grey coming in. Just that'd be the bank. And we're just dubbing some. Show some texture and we'll more or less neat grey there. And just have some little, little banks, little bearing the the edge of this. Alright, that's okay. Right now here, this is this I want to come up quite high there, so I'm going to go really dark in here. Uh, and then get some lights in there, some sienna and that. Of, I'm not going to drag a dry brush to this. I'm just going to create a surface and texture. Let it blend and do its own thing. Now I'm using very heavy paint here. My paint on my palette is quite loose now because I've been using it this morning. Bits of grass coming in here, but it's it's all muted and, and bleak. Get some more dark in there. Let that all blend into the wet in wet. And of course there. Oh, I'm getting excited now. Clean the brush a bit. It's just now that it's dark, you can flick into it, but don't overdo it. Never goes a long way. So we want the warm. All right, okay. Now we get some real dark in there now on that, on that back here. <coughs> oh. 
I'll do the, I'll do the, the, the fast running stream in a minute, but I want that all to dry. Now I'm going to uh, put in the uh, the warmer dry brush. shapes of these trees here. I'm going to use the same colours I've been using here, uh, the grey and the and the sienna, burnt sienna. So just let's just show you just just dry gently dry brush them with the side of the corner of of your hake. Don't forget that there's some twiggy stuff coming behind. So it's a good idea. It's a just bit of bit of blue and a bit of grey. And that will give you give the impression that there's some stuff going on behind. The other one will be just a little bit further back, but still warm on the warm side as well. Drying off, so I'm going to put these chunks. I'm going to rig the uh, chunks. Let's put in some some texture in here. Well, this could be uh, a bit of a sort of hedgerow. Well, just imagination, really. Top across here, of showing some foliage, all very low. Uh, well, just do you ever wish you were better than you actually are? Oh, dear old Turner thought, Oh, if only I was a bit better. If only I could have done that fight in Temeraire a little bit more realistically. Doesn't do to be satisfied with your work, does it? Right, um, I want, I'll work on these trees now a little bit and then here I, I can detail some bushes and stuff. I'll get my, my rigger and I want those to be quite dark. Um, I'm mixing up. Burnt sienna with uh, a bit of blue. Uh, so, we'll, uh, so these would be just a bit in front of those barns. I want the uh, barns to go back now, so that's why I'm putting these trees in front of, of the barns. Um, bear in mind that great big oak trees, whatever they are, need a, a big base to support them. So don't make them. The branches can be spin, go to spindles, but. But the, the base of the tree must be strong enough to support the whole tree. And then we can come down here.
very easy to make one tree the same as the other tree. It's so easy, easily done. You can spend hours doing this, but I don't propose to. Wiggly ones in the top. Just a little bit of blue in there now, just to show that for a bit further back. Coming more to the land side. Now this is probably the only real calligraphy in the painting and you don't want it to compete with with the sky or any other part by making the sky too elaborate. So this is the, uh, the only detail we're putting in this. And here we have a couple coming up here. Those nice and strong, yeah. So, just a few twigs going up into the canopy. Right now, those barns look uh, quite lost now, don't they? That, that's what it was. They, they're now set back in the landscape. I'll just have a look. Couple of trees in there, I think. Fine, leave that alone. Quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, I want to put in some brushy stuff in there now. So, nice and warm, it's a wintry scene, so just, just a bit of brown. Sort of stunted. Well weathered. Bit of something there.
I need to just anchor that. Give that a dry. Um. Now this is a fast flowing river really, um, or stream, uh, but we'll do it as a reflection. So I wet the paper without disturbing what's underneath and then we can just put in bits of, bits of bank here. Imagine that this is just a uh, an inlet, a salt marsh, which it is, but but of still water rather than running water. It's the tide coming in a little bit. Uh, if we just do that, that show a bit of broken water, won't it? Or not as the case may be. While that dries, I'll uh, my rigor. I'll dry it a little bit. And put in some reflection of these. Trying to get these more or less underneath the barn side there. Put a signature on it. Don't usually sign over the upper here. Yeah. Well, we could put some little figures in there. Uh, some 
walkers or farmer and something going on. Some, uh, some ducks. Right, it's okay, put that in the mouth, see what that's like. The old blue mouth. This is more my style of painting, really. I know we try to do something different every time, but it's quite difficult to keep it up. Right. There we are. So let's uh, zoom in and see what we've done. So you see the figures? See how simply I did the trees and the barns behind? Uh, all, very, oops, all very simple clouds. This, this area here, that's the support for the whole picture. But I haven't elaborated it, or over-elaborated it. I've, I've just painted it dark as a support and reflect the sky of the cloud and the water I've done very, very simply. There you go, let's uh, come back out of that. So I hope you like that. It's, it's a, just a bleak... Romney Marsh scene based on a Roland Hilda. I can't take all the credit for it, but but it's my version of it. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.